This is the first section of chapter nine on constant acceleration from the year one stats and mechanics book. And uh, this is on displacement time graphs. So before we start on this, let's just uh, make it clear what's the difference between distance and displacement. Now distance is the total um, to use the word distance, total distance uh, covered. Okay, whereas displacement, that is the um, distance from your starting position. So it's important that we know the difference between the two. So let me give you an example of how the two differ. So let's say I start at this point here, which I'll call A. And let's say I move a, dis uh, a distance here of 10 meters. Okay, and then I turn around and I come back a distance five meters, and then I stop here. And we'll call this point C, and we'll pull, call this point here where I turned around B. Now, if I look at the displacement, the displacement is how far am I away from my starting position? Now that's this distance here. So let's mark that in a different color. So that distance there from where I start is the displacement. So here we have a displacement of five meters. Displacement equals five meters. And that's actually the distance from A to, B, A to C. Whereas the distance that I've covered well, the distance, that is the 10 that way and the 5 this way. So if I was walking, I've actually walked a distance of 15 metres. So the distance would be 15 metres. And that's basically going from A to B and then to C. So you see the difference between the two. So here we look at displacement time graphs. At GCC, we would have called these distance time graphs. So we have time along the x-axis and we have displacement along the vertical y-axis. Time, uh, well, normally this would be in seconds and displacement would be in meters if we're using SI units. And normally with these types of graphs, we sort of go up a bit. Maybe we go across and maybe we, we come down. So you'll know from GCSC that if it's flat here, that shows that um, the object, whatever it is, is stationary. It's not moving. Stationary, so not moving. Time is passing, but your displacement isn't changing. And with these lines here, we know that the gradient of those lines, gradient, is equal to the speed. Okay, I'm going to put slash velocity because there is a slight difference between the two. And we know that steeper equals faster. Steeper equals faster. Right, now we said there was a difference between displacement and distance. That will actually give us a difference between speed and velocity. So we'll start with speed. We've come across that before. And we know that speed equals distance over time. And we have that formula triangle that we use that links speed, distance, and time like this. But velocity is equal to displacement over time, displacement over time. And we know the difference between displacement and distance. When we want to find the velocity, we do the displacement divided by the time, not the distance divided by the time. So if I go back to my example here, if I wanted to know the speed for my whole journey, I would take the distance as 15 and divide it by the time it took me to walk or to move that 15 meters. 
if I wanted to find the velocity, the, the displacement would be 5 divided by, again, the time it's taken me to get from here to here, which would be the time that I've, it takes to go around that way. But I wouldn't use the distance, I'd use a displacement of 5. So this is the really important part here, the displacement. This may be a new concept to you. We use displacement when we want to find a velocity. And displacement is the distance we are from our starting position, not how far I've walked or moved in total. So here I've got a, a displacement time graph drawn for me. And it says the cyclist rides in a straight line for 20 minutes. She waits for half an hour, then returns in a straight line to her starting point in 15 minutes. This is a displacement time graph for her journey. OK, so this is where she cycles for 20 minutes and then she waits for half an hour. So that's that part here. And this is her returning to her starting position in 15 minutes. In part A, it says work out the average velocity for each stage of the journey in kilometers per hour. So we'll start with part A and um, maybe if we call this part down here O. So we're going to work out the velocity for the part of the journey that goes from O to A. Now velocity remember is going to be displacement over time. So what's the displacement from the starting position? Well, the displacement is going to be five. She's five kilometers from where she started. And the time here is in minutes. But because we want the velocity in kilometers per hour, we need to change minutes to hours. And to change minutes to hours, um, if you do the number of minutes over 60, that becomes hours. So 20 minutes in hours is 20 over 60. So let's write that as um, 5, that's the displacement, over 20 over 60. Well, that's the same as a third, isn't it? So basically 20 minutes is a third of an hour. So 5 divided by a third, which is the same as 5 times by 3. So that's going to be um, an average velocity of 15 kilometers per hour. Right, now let's look at the velocity for the part of the journey that's from A to B. That's that flat part that's here. Um, I think we probably already know it's zero because the displacement is zero. And if we do zero divided by the time between here and here, that's 30 minutes. So that's 30 over 60 hours. This is just to show you the work. You don't necessarily have to do this because we know the answer. So that'd be zero divided by a half. That's what 30 over 60 divided um, becomes. So that's zero kilometers per hour, but I think we knew that. We didn't necessarily have to do the working. And then for the last part of the journey from B to C, now, with velocity, we need to consider the direction that's being traveled. And since we are moving back to where we start, this is considered as a negative displacement. This is a negative displacement here. So this will be a displacement of negative 5 divided by the time taken and that's 15 minutes so it's going to be 15 over 60 as hours so it'll be negative 5 divided by let's water. so that's the same as negative 5 times by 4 so negative 20 kilometers per hour so we wouldn't get this with speed we wouldn't get a negative but we get it with velocity so the important point to take from this is that the direction matters velocity includes the direction velocity includes direction so if you're going backwards you're going to get a 
um, negative displacement backwards equals negative that's shorthand for negative displacement oh sorry negative velocity and a negative displacement I've left it negative uh, displacement and we'll get a negative velocity as a result of that so let's have a look at part b and part b says work out the average velocity for the whole journey so this is the whole journey so we need to look at the displacement for the whole journey from the very start to the end now we have a displacement of five then a displacement of negative five which is a displacement of zero so if you have a look we actually back to where we start what's the distance from where we started it's zero so the, the average velocity for the whole journey is going to be a displacement of zero divided by a total time of 65 minutes 65 over 60 now we don't really need to do this because we know it's going to be zero anyway but i'll just work it out so you can just see fully what's going on um well actually let's just work that out there it's just going to be zero so zero kilometers per hour now this might be counterintuitive because you might be thinking well hang on why is it I've actually been moving and I've got a velocity of zero that's because velocity is placed on displacement and the displacement is zero speed is a different matter the average speed would be the, the distance divided by the time so there's the difference because we're with velocity we're looking at the displacement and if the displacement is zero your average velocity is going to be zero so part c we're going to work out the average speed for the whole journey so the average speed is going to be the distance over time and in fact because it's an average distance we want the total distance divided by the total time so the total distance covered is going to be five that way plus another five this way so the distance is 10 and the total time all well, that is 65 minutes so 65 over 60 that's the same as 10 divided by 13 over 12 or 10 times by 12 over 13 so 10 times by 12 over 13 and we get 120 over 13 um, exactly 120 over 13 that's what the exact value is uh, in kilometers per hour but let's give that as a decimal maybe to three significant figures and uh, we get 9.23 kilometers per hour and that's two three significant figures so you should now be able to do exercise 9a on page 132 so a quick recap we want to just talk about the dis difference between distance and displacement so distance that's your total distance covered whereas your displacement is just the distance from starting position if you are moving backwards you're going to have a negative displacement so I'll just put it here backwards equals negative displacement equals negative shorthand for negative displacement and uh, velocity is displacement over time whereas speed is going to be
be distance over time. And because displacement can be negative, that means that velocity can be negative. Okay, because velocity is telling you something about the direction as well. It's not just telling you how fast you're going, it's telling you in which direction you're going as well. So I'll just put that down, can be negative because velocity includes direction. It's what we call a vector quantity. Vector quantities include direction, whereas speed is as a scalar quantity, so it's just a number. It doesn't tell you anything about the direction.